Where does self-worth come from and how can we get it? Well, when we're little, we get most of our self-worth from our parents. Our parents are the ones who build us up and they tell us that we're good at things and we feel like, you know, we must be having uh, self-worth if our parents uh, pay attention to us and love us. And as we get older, it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, for one thing, we start thinking about things in more complex ways. And sometimes our brains can misinterpret things. So if our parents are busy, we might interpret that as our parents don't love us. Or if our parents get upset at us, we might interpret this to mean that our parents don't love us. And if our parents don't love us, that we think that we don't have any self-worth. Even if our parents actually do love us, but they just got upset or, you know, they were having to do some important uh, thing in their life to take care of business or whatever. Another thing that complicates things is then eventually we, we go out and we start comparing ourselves to other people. And we find out that other people are stronger than us. Other people are smarter than us. Other people are more talented than us. Other people are better looking than us. And we start comparing ourselves and thinking that maybe this diminishes our self-worth. If someone else is better at us at the thing that we thought was the best about us, then that means they have more worth, which means that we must therefore have less worth. And when we feel insecure about our self-worth, it can really mess up a lot of things for us. I'll give you an example. So I used to work on a fishing boat. In the fishing boat, I used to grab ropes and I'd pull on the ropes all day long. I was the cork stacker. And I basically did this motion all day long, all summer long. And this muscle got really, really strong. And I could beat everyone in the school easily. We'd arm wrestle and it was just like cutting through butter with a hot knife. And I started to associate my self-worth with arm wrestling. And then I, I would look for opportunities to arm wrestle people. Hey, do you want to arm wrestle? And we'd arm wrestle and I'd beat him and then I'd feel like I was somehow better. Really immature, pretty stupid, silly thing. My self-worth is determined by my ability to do this. Anyways, so as I got older, um, I stopped being the cork stacker on the boat. And those muscles, the ones in here, atrophied a little bit. And I wasn't as strong. And then later on, I ended up arm wrestling someone. And I got my butt kicked. And uh, this is the first time this had happened in like a long time. And all of a sudden, I felt like I was about that big. And I had kind of a, a realization moment about myself, realizing that, wow, I've been measuring my self-worth by my ability to move my arm like this for a long time. And that's really silly. And I was able to kind of process through that realizing that this is not a healthy thing to do. So I needed to measure my self-worth by something else. And, uh, and I went through kind of like a self-discovery thing. And fortunately, I feel like I came to a, a pretty good place with my self-worth. And, um, and I found other things to, to kind of measure my self-worth by. But I decided that, that ultimately, at the end of the day, my self-worth wasn't going to be determined by anything that I could measure to anyone else. That it was... It was something inside of myself, something that only I could see and nobody else could see. And I could demonstrate this by doing the best that I could to be a good person or trying my best to be a good person. But nobody else could see how hard I was trying. And I couldn't see how hard anybody else was trying to be a good person. And so my self-worth became kind of invincible in the sense that I had complete control over it. And I lacked the ability to compare my self-worth to anyone else. So... Another thing that I did with my self-worth, I want to share some a few lessons here, is for a little while, I felt like people wouldn't like me unless I could demonstrate something, you know? This was around the same time as the arm wrestling thing. It, was, it got kind of awkward going around arm wrestling people all the time to try to establish my self-worth. So another thing I did is I found, hey, when I play guitar, sometimes people will pay attention to me and they'll like me and they'll, they'll sit around and listen and, and maybe that's a way I can establish self-worth. So I started bringing my guitar with me everywhere. And it was kind of awkward uh, looking back. I would bring it to like inappropriate places where hey, everybody's having a party. I walk in with my guitar. And then I'd go sit by myself in the corner and play my guitar while everybody else was talking and having a good time. And um, it was because I felt like maybe this was a way that I could uh, get some self-worth. People would notice me playing guitar and then maybe they would like me because I played guitar. 
Uh, and I did this instead of talking to people and meeting people and getting myself out there in other ways. Kind of was a, a weird thing socially. Um, sometimes self-worth becomes something that we we end up guarding and it really messes up our, our relationships. Um, sometimes people can get really associated, get their, their self-worth really associated to something like winning at games. I have uh, a good friend who um, felt like his self-worth was kind of tied into winning at board games and card games. And so when you'd play a board game or a card game with him, he would do everything in his power to win. Um, he would become um, emotionally manipulative to try and win. Like he'd get kind of upset at you if he started to lose. Or, and then he would he would like cheat if he had to, anything. And then to when it finally came down to it to prevent him from losing, if he started losing or luckily he was going to lose, he would throw the game over or quit for some reason or get angry at somebody or give some kind of reason why he had to stop playing. And this is because all of his self-worth became attached to, I need to be smart enough to win at this game. And if I lose at this game, I've just lost all of my self-worth. I no longer have any worth as a human. And so he was guarding his game winning with his life. And um, sometimes this kind of uh, thing can happen. And it's important to recognize why it's happening and, um, and evaluate it. Um, sometimes our self-worth can also be eroded by certain beliefs that we have, where we believe something that actually isn't true, or it's a lousy version of the truth is maybe a better way of saying it. Uh, we can believe that, um, you know, everybody around us doesn't really love us or, um, or that, you know, everything's unfair and people are always treating you unfairly and these kinds of things. And these, these kind of perspectives that we can have on reality can ruin our lives. If we start, if something bad happens to us, um, that can be an isolated event, but sometimes we can start believing that, oh, everything bad happens to me because everybody doesn't love me because maybe I don't have enough self-worth in some way. It can, it can really become this negative thing. When an event turns into a pattern, which turns into an identity, that's when our life is in jeopardy of being ruined. So uh, an isolated event where somebody got mad at us or something happened, we got an argument, that's an isolated event. When it turns into a pattern is where we start saying, everybody's always getting mad at me. Everybody's always um, you know, treating me poorly or something like this. And where it turns into an identity is where we say, I am a victim. And, and that, when, once we identify with being the victim, our whole way of seeing the entire universe and ourselves changes. And we start every way we can possibly interpret any situation to see ourselves as the victim in the situation starts happening. And, uh, and then even if uh, 50 good things happen to us, but one bad thing happen, happens to us, we will focus on that one bad thing. We don't even notice the 50 good things. We only notice the one bad thing. And that becomes evidence for our identity. See? They ended up getting mad at me. They ended up getting upset at me. And this is support for why I am the victim because that's the identity that I have. This all fits into the pattern and these, and these isolated incidences all fit into the pattern. The pattern proves my identity as the victim. And our, and our, our eyes, our mind becomes blind to all evidences that would point to the contrary of our identity. We don't have the ability to see anything positive any, anymore. We only see the things that support our new identity, the way that we approach the world. And so if we're recognizing this is starting to happen, sometimes people that love us can point this out to us. Sometimes we can just look introspectively enough to, to notice that this is happening. And then we can go about trying to change our identity, to change, uh-oh, I am seeing my, I have identified myself in a way that is not going to help me have a good life. It's self-destructive. Whether or not it's true, whether or not you are the victim or not, if you see yourself as, as the victim, it's not a good way to see yourself. See yourself as the hero or the champion or someone who rises above things. Those are all positive and healthy. That'll help you have a good life. Even if you are the victim, um, it, it, it's, it's what's pragmatic, what's useful. And certain identities even if they could be true under some circumstances, 
are not pragmatic. They're not helpful. Um, they're not healthy, uh, healthy ways of use, viewing ourselves. So when it comes to self-worth, uh, let's review real quickly. For one, what, it, what are you attaching your self-worth to? Where does your self-worth come from? <coughs> Very important thing to recognize. Where is the self-worth coming from? And then the second thing is, have I taken on an identity that is eroding my self-worth? Um, so if you can pay attention to those two things, uh, that can help you to get some good self-worth, or at least help you not to destroy your self-worth. Now, as far as building up your self-worth in positive ways, getting good at something can can be helpful. Uh, but recognize that anything that's worth, uh, how do I say this? Anything great, any great thing, let's say that I wanted to become a NBA basketball star or something, I don't know, a star athlete or a whatever, anything that's great will, if it is great, it requires failure in the process of becoming great, which means I'm going to have to throw that basketball at that hoop and miss thousands of times in order for me to be, um, in order for me to be good enough to be proficient at it. Or let's say it's, um, uh, baseball, I'm going to have to swing that bat thousands of times and miss before I can get to a point where I'm good at it. So actually, in order for us to become good at something, we actually have to expose ourselves to failure. And the problem with this is that if you have a bad self-esteem or, you, or your, your self-esteem is somehow tied in with not failing, then that means that you can actually never become great. You can never become good at anything, at anything worth being good at. You'd have to be automatically be, be the best at something when you just started, which it's like nobody's the best at anything when they just started, um, unless it's something stupid that's not even worth doing. Uh, everything that's, that's amazing, that's worth doing, we have to practice at to become good at. We have to be, we have to be willing to fail at it over and 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 over again, thousands of times. And after all those failures, we slowly start learning and improving and getting better at it. And then once we become good at something, we become proficient at something, that can be a source of self-worth for us. We can help us feel like, hey, you know, I'm good at this thing. I've worked really hard at this thing and I've gotten good at it. And, and maybe, you know, that can be a, a little jumpstart for self-worth. Um, Ultimately, though, if we can achieve it, we can just feel like intrinsically we have self-worth regardless of, you know, whatever happens to us or whether we end up being good at something or whether somebody's better at us at something or whatever it may be. If we can just feel like I have self-worth no matter what. And that's a hard thing to obtain. A lot of times we feel like we need to get our self-worth from other people. Other people have to recognize that we're good in order for us to feel good about ourselves. That's just naturally a lot of times the way that it works. Um... But if we have one of those, those beliefs, those identities of I'm a victim or I'm no good or something like that, we have some kind of this, uh, this self-defeating identity, then we can actually prevent ourselves from ever getting there, ever getting to that point where we feel like, hey, even if I win or I lose, my self-worth is still intact. I still have worth as an individual. I'm still a good person. You know, If we can get there, that's the best. But it, it's hard if we have a self-defeating identity. Anyway, I hope this little bit on self-worth was helpful for you. Um, I just wanted to kind of throw this out there and hope it helps somebody. Thanks. Bye.